Goodrich Castle, dating back to the 11th century and home to one of the toughest sieges of the English Civil War. This castle is one of the best preserved, picturesque and iconic medieval castles in England today. So yes, hello and welcome to Goodrich Castle. And as you can see today, this castle is in a very ruinous state. And it's been like this ever since 1648, after an epic two month long siege during the English Civil War. But first, let's look back at the early history of this castle going all the way back to the year 1101. So this castle is located on a very important border crossing between England and Wales. And it was first constructed by an English nobleman named Godrich Mapperson. Although nothing of what Godrich built in the year 1101 is still standing today, except for one very important thing, which is this castle's name itself, as Godrich's castle has become known today as Goodrich Castle. So throughout the 1100s, this castle was passed around from generation to generation, and in 1148, it was passed to Richard de Clare, who was the man that built this very keep that I'm standing on right now, and it's actually the oldest bit of the castle that is still standing today. And so obviously this keep has been subject to many changes over the long life of this castle. As you can see from this video here, the original entrance was on the first floor, but that was later blocked off in favour of a ground floor entrance, and the old one was converted into this very fancy looking window that you can see right here. Why are you feeling? Just get down here. So Richard de Clare died in 1176 and the castle was again passed around multiple families over the next 500 years. And throughout all of these years, Goodrich Castle had a relatively peaceful history. There was not really any battles fought in and around the castle uh, and so it was still in pretty good shape. Well, to be honest, calling this castle in just good shape is a bit of an understatement, really, because most of what we see today was built in 1247 by William and Jean de Valence and they turned Goodrich Castle into one of the most sophisticated and architecturally impressive castles of the time, which would certainly help the castle by the time the English Civil War rolled around in 1642. Now before we get onto the actual siege of Goodrich Castle, let me give you a brief and very simplified history about the English Civil War. So the Civil War officially started in 1642, but the problems actually started all the way back in 1629 when King Charles I dismissed all of his MPs from Parliament as they basically disagreed with many of his policies that were all regarding raising taxes and he had a lot of sort of very unpopular policies that he was trying to put through. And King Charles was of the belief that as King, his rule and his decisions were should have been unquestioned and he shouldn't have to answer to anyone because well he was the king and so for the next 11 years king charles ruled alone and a lot of the things he did were very controversial and disliked by most and by 1642 everyone had basically had enough and two sides began to form there was the parliamentarians which all sided against king charles and then the royalists in favor of king charles and in my opinion one of the most interesting sieges of this civil war was fought right here at goodrich castle so let me tell you about it So in 1644, around two years after the start of the English Civil War, 170 royalists were garrisoned inside this castle under the command of Sir Henry Lingon. And around one year later, the parliamentarians started to close in on the surrounding areas of the castle under the command of Colonel John Birch. So at this point in time, conflict in the future was going to be imminent. Now, 
Now, Birch's first conflict at Goodrich Castle took place in 1646 and happened right where I am standing right now, which is the old stables. Birch's plan was to send 10 men to sneak into the stables, steal all of the royalist horses, which is reported that there were around 80 horses in these stables at the time, and then burn the stables down. So what Birch did, he launched a main attack at the main gate, but that was just a diversion attack, so that then he could send the 10 men whilst the entire royalist garrison was distracted uh, into these stables here. And basically the operation was a massive success. All 80 horses were led away and the uh, remaining stables completely burned down, which would have been a massive blow to the royalists, both sort of strategically and mentally. But even regardless of this, they still stood strong inside the castle for the next couple of months. So Birch returned again three months later on the 1st of June uh, 1646, hoping that this time he could get the Royalists to surrender once and for all. And basically it's important to note that by this time the English Civil War was basically over anyway. The Royalists had pretty much lost already by this point. So due to the castle's incredible defences and very strategic uh, position, storming the main gates to take this castle wasn't really an option for Birch. So he began by writing just a simple letter to Lingen which read I demand of you the possession of this castle of Goodrich, which, if you shall assent unto, you may command my utmost service in anything which may tend to the public good, your honour and future welfare. And he ended the letter by basically saying, if you don't give up the castle, blood and utter ruin will follow. But regardless, Lingen did write back, refusing to give up the castle. And so the siege of Goodrich Castle then began, basically sealing its fate into the uh, ruins that we see today. So Birch started the attack with mortar fire, which very quickly cut off the castle's water supply, leaving the well on the inside of the castle royalists' only supply of water, which was obviously bad news for many reasons. The royalists occasionally sent out sort of small attacks on the very few horses that they had left, but all of these were proved unsuccessful and actually just ended in them losing even more horses. So after two months of this, we get to the epic finale of this siege which all revolves around this, the only surviving cannon from the English Civil Wars, which is known as Roaring Meg. So Birch knew that his mortars alone didn't have anywhere near enough firepower to break through this castle's massive defences. So he ordered this cannon to be built and it was able to fire a shell filled with gunpowder weighing 85 kilograms. This cannon, to put it lightly, was very effective. Probably the noise of the explosions alone were almost enough to make the royalists surrender. But Birch fired on the castle nonetheless, mainly focusing on that tower that you can see right over there, which is why it is so destroyed today. Roaring Meg was completely unleashed on the tower and the tower was completely obliterated. And after this, with a massive hole in the wall, the castle was pretty much undefendable. And Lingen surrendered on the 31st of July, which is exactly 60 days after this siege started. And the parliamentarian victory was achieved and the castle was left in this ruined state that we see today. But in 1648, the uh, castle was purposely demolished even further which the parliamentarians did to many castles all over England, which is why you see so many castles in ruins today. Another castle that suffered a very similar fate to this one was actually Corfe Castle, which is located in Dorset. We visited it a few months ago. An equally incredible castle located on top of a massive hill and such an imposing structure. I will link the video up here and down in the description if you are interested in learning more about that castle. But yes, Lingen died of smallpox in 1661 and Birch went on to become the member of parliament that he had fought so hard for. And that is the story of Goodrich Castle and the English Civil War. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoy. If you did like the video and you want to see more, feel free to check out some other videos on my channel. We're always traveling and trekking all over England, see what we find. So yes, subscribe if you enjoyed. It really means a lot. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.